Thank you very much. We are Niak from Cologne. We are very happy to be here to play for you. Um, we hope you enjoy our set. Um, this is Philipp Bremsweg on the guitar, Stefan Schöneck on double bass, Fabian Arends on the drums, and my name is Stefan Karl Schmidt. Um, we will present music from our latest album. It's called Awake. And these are, these are only compositions of um, Philipp and mine. We started with a tune of mine has a German title called Alarmstufe Bund and we will continue with uh, three different tunes. The first one is Some Other Time by Philip, followed by Dreaming of Nippes and the third tune is De Rigueur. Enjoy.
Thank you. This was De Rigueur, composition of mine once again. Fabian Ahrens on the drums, Stefan Schöneck on bass, Philipp Bremswig on guitar, and Stefan Karl Schmidt on the saxophone. We are Niak. Thank you very much, Jazz Ahead, for making this possible. It's a great joy for us being on stage, playing this concert. We hope you felt some joy, too, through our music, uh, on your screen, through your computer speakers. We hope to um, see you all soon in person, um, as soon as possible. Stay safe. Thanks again for having us. And we will close our showcase set with a composition from Philip. It's called Le Doigt Dormant. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the jazz ahead. See you soon.
Dank euch. That was the sound of one hand clapping, or maybe two or three. Um, what an amazing and beautiful performance by a band that I know now finally is called Nyak and not Nyake, which uh, shows you how bad my French is. But uh, that doesn't take anything away from these wonderful musicians from Cologne. And uh, with me now up here is the man who was just down there, Mr. Everywhere, Peter Schulz, <laughs> one of the artistic directors of uh, Jazz Ahead. And uh, wow, that was really wonderful music, right? I mean, it's it must feel Great. very fulfilling when you have something on the program and you worked up to it and then you finally see and hear them and you know, well, they're really that good. And you are uh, so, so long, much longing for, for this sort of live music. And it's it's great. I mean, I would really uh, like many people to listen to it live down there. Uh, but we were privileged. I mean, it was just the two of us, uh, with Uli and me, uh, to uh, to listen to it. Great, great music, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I mean, we should not forget that uh, despite the trade fair, we also have a festival going on around the trade fair. And uh, now it's a band with a French name and it's a Belgian band playing tonight. <laughs> yes, but this is all the showcase part of right. it. Um, but we have a festival that is normally directed to the, to the partner country. Uh, but we have no partner country this year, as you know and mentioned uh, a couple of times, we have International Jazz Day as partner, so we have the world as partner. But nevertheless, uh, we have a local festival uh, in Bremen, parallel to, to, to Jazz Ahead, that's for the local audience. Normally we have a club night as well, right. and 30 venues, but no venues open, so uh, we still have again, without audience, uh, four additional concerts. Uh, l last night we had uh, Jakob Munz's uh, project, and tonight uh, there is Tin Man and the Telephone, which is a wonderful band, a wonderful trio from, from Amsterdam. They stream a Zoom concert from, from Amsterdam, uh, and they uh, have, have a lot of audience participation. Tony Rowe, he's just great and genius on that, uh, including anything and everything, the audience, the politicians and everything. You should, you should really experience that. Uh, that is Tim on the telephone tonight. I think uh, I still have the app on my phone. I remember uh, Tin, downloading yeah, it Tin during Mandu. the concert. Tin Man Do, yeah, check it out. Uh, you, can, you can listen to it, and, uh, but you have to pay for it extra so even even the registered uh, participants have to pay for this concert because that is not part of your your uh, uh, registration but if you haven't experienced it i must say i mean they were really advanced in embracing this virtual and digital yeah. world yes. and they were well, one of the first bands that i saw that you know had their own app and you could really influence what was going on on stage right. through the app you can compose with them yeah uh, it's, it's it's just just thrilling you should check it out it's it's a lot about improvisation uh, on a on a different level but totally convenient with the uh, with the uh, uh, with the pandemic yeah <laughs> <You know? laughs> sooner or well sooner or later or more or less it's it's uh, it's corona music he never uh, conceived it as, as that but but uh, it is yeah and, and tomorrow, tomorrow we have um, um, uh, words uh, for the piano. It's a, it's a, well, it's a, a lo we have local uh, poets and, and writers who uh, um, talk, and we have uh, Martin Tingwall on piano, uh, kind of accompanying it. And on Sunday evening we have in the, this festival in the Metropole Theatre in Bremen. Uh, Yasmin Tabatabai and David Klein Trio uh, Quartet. Um, it's a wonderful German actress and singer, and she sings uh, songs uh, from the German uh, song tradition. Interesting, that's on Saturday. 
<laughs> so. And will you go there? Will you be able to see that? I'm actually? afraid I don't have the time. I mean, uh, yesterday I wanted to see Jakob Manz, but uh, he was so much going on uh, here, and uh, there is tonight as well. I hope I'll get some glimpse of Tinman and the telephone. At least I've got a code for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, but it's, you know, for us, it almost feels like a regular jazz ahead. We're uh, super busy. We're up since early morning, way until late at night we're meeting lots of musicians yes. um, and uh, we're um, really trying hard to convey this energy and this enthusiasm to you out there at home and I know that during some of the panels already I was really struck by this social media panel I must admit because there was they were so excited about what they were talking about, you know? It wasn't something that where well, they were reading off uh, something from a Statements, script. Statements, yeah. Wow, and and I took away so much from that, uh, and I think the the most essential thing was that you know you can only do social media if you're social. Yeah, if, right. if you're not, if you're not into that, it's not for you. Yeah. You know, then don't bother. And if you missed a panel uh, that you would like to see because uh, uh, you heard something good about that. It's still online. I mean, you can you can check it out. Uh, you can uh, uh, listen to it and s watch it on demand. Uh, and until July, July until think, yeah. July. So you have plenty of time to get these four days uh, <laughs> stripped out to uh, to four months. You know? We should have done that much earlier. Actually, I remember many times where, where after the fact you thought like, oh. I really wanted to see that or meet that person or go to that panel. And then, of course, yeah. you know, couldn't. So now we can. And so, we have our next guests here. I think so, already. yes. So I see you later, Gertz. Later. Okay. Thank you very much. See you later. Um, Niak was just on stage down there. And uh, so Philipp Remswig and Stefan Karl Schmidt have come here uh, to talk to us a little bit about their music maybe about the German Jazz Expo, maybe about Cologne, because that's where they both are, and I'm really looking forward to talking to them. Um, they're coming on stage. You may ta take your masks off if you feel comfortable with it. Philipp Rimsig, Stefan Schmidt, glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I know at some point during the preparation for this, we thought it would be like, you know, in the Sportschau, in the football game. You still have the players on stage and, uh, um, you know, the, the two people who watch the game are like standing up here criticizing, uh, you know, in minute 13, he should have played that lick. Or, we did not do that. We talked about something completely different, but we're still happy to have the players up here. Um, the, sweaty, sweaty. the sweaty jazz players coming from the field. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and and now as a sports journalist I have to ask how was the game for you? <laughs> I was pretty I think we had a good game tonight. Yeah, it was yeah. was nice. We uh, did our best. <laughs> yeah, we practiced a lot at home for ourselves and finally we had the chance to play together today again after a long break. So we really enjoyed it being on stage yeah. and I That's missed it kind of just yeah. playing. You know. Yeah. It I think uh people could feel that. You know, there was uh it's to me, it's surprising and really exhilarating to feel that energy that normally everybody, uh, all the musicians talk about feeding off the audience, you know, there's, yeah. and you had applause from the, all of the two peoples that were there yeah. and, <laughs> and still you, you gave it your all. So uh, is that something that, that you already got used to during the last year or? Yeah, actually, um, I think, yeah, we, you kind of get used to it, that there's this awkward silence after, after your uh, piece, nobody clapping hands and stuff. But I think it was always, at least for me, the way when, uh, when I play such music and the music is kind of also complicated and I have to really open my ears and my, my heart to, to play it. So I, I close my eyes during playing and, and while playing, I kind of forget where I am in 
if in the most ideal way. So I, and I open my eyes after the after the tune finished, and oops, there's no audience there. <laughs> okay, I, all right, I'm I'm in Bremen. Okay, I have to make an announcement or something, and then I I think about the the rest. So while the music is happening, I feel absolutely inspired by the colleagues on stage, and I'm I try to be in the music only. And of course, if there's some feedback from from the audience in addition, it supports maybe my my playing and it adds to it. But it also works works alone, just the music itself, kind of. But it's much greater to have an audience, of course, because it adds another layer that is really important to the uh, concert it, as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I must admit, I was uh, watching it f here on screen. Uh, they did some really beautiful camera work. It looked really good. It sounded good, you know. And uh, as I said, that energy was really feeding off. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure that the people at home who were able to watch that um, felt that too. Because, I mean, it's something to go back to it on YouTube or wherever after the fact. But sure. to know that it's live, yeah. which we now really know because there was this camera glitch at the beginning. <laughs> but, <laughs> but hey, it's live. You know, that's yeah, sure. uh, um, Real life. that yeah. stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you didn't, you know, you just kept calm and carried on and uh, made um, really such a beautiful performance. I really, really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Thanks. You've been together. I mean, um, Peter said it. You mm -hmm. played for 15 years together. Well, I mean, not permanently. I, I think <coughs> we know each other for 15 years now, and we got to know each other like in a big band setting. And uh, well, we also played combo, I guess, in the evenings because in the evenings was just uh, free time to <laughs> uh, pursue your musical endeavors. But then we kind of uh, just ended up in different areas of the world, but uh, crossed paths again in Cologne in. 2010, 2011, 11, yeah, mm -hmm. around that time, and <laughs> we just had the sessions like, hey, but you know, I know you from from the Buyazzo, which is like a huge pool of people uh, you get to know over the the time, and yeah, it was just great to see each other again and to immediately feel like, hey, there's this click there. Buyazzo translates as. Bundesjugend Jazz Ger German Orchestra Federal something. Youth Big Band. I think it's like the there you go. That yeah. scientific much more term. <laughs> um, I read that you were actually there when Peter Herbertheimer was still there. Yeah, really? he we was. Were. He was yeah. still doing it. Yeah, we did some also some touring with him with his concert big band. Then in the I think we were in the Ukraine right together touring yeah. with Peter. Think, yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> two thousand. Seven, eight, or something. Yeah, that's that's where we met initially, and was wow. was great to meet Peter. Really great, yeah. great person, and we. I think everybody learned a lot of him. I mean, he's it's kind of the legacy, his legacy, <laughs> the Federal <laughs> Jazz Orchestra, and it's still it's going on. They are developing it further at the moment, and a great uh, conductors and composers being there, and a great team taking care of all the organization, the German, the Deutsche Musikrat very important organization and they are really doing an amazing job and now we are of course teaching um, these maybe students that are now in the Buyatsu where we used to play 15 years ago and it's oh, great wow. to to hear stories from them what they are doing at the moment and it keeps yeah, sure. keeps growing and it's a really great opportunity for young people to meet other people who have the same dream of becoming jazz musicians and <laughs> you keep these connections forever it's it's like a like a small jazz ahead you go everywhere like <laughs> two times a, a year and yeah, you meet all these people year. and you exchange music <laughs> and ideas and they st tell you stories from their teachers and that's where we met initially and so yeah. and yeah you see what what comes out of it we, now we are here 15 years later and still playing together and enjoying um, music so yeah it's great I mean, Peter Herbolzheimer also was one of the first to really, you know, get all of these international musicians together for his rhythm combination and sure. brass. Yeah. yeah, right. And to tour them internationally. I mean, there's this beautiful album, Live at Ronnie Scott's, um, with British players, you know, players from the US and German and other European countries. And I think this spirit of kind of giving that to the next generation was very, very important with yeah. the Buyazzo. 
and also his energy. I mean, you know, he was a very, very energetic guy and someone who uh, who wanted everybody else to feel his passion for the music. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> it remains a nice cluster to motivate people and, you know, just yeah, get them out there, actually. It's just, uh, you know... Two two times a year you're you're meeting and then you go home and you have stuff to practice for half a year and then it's really great. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that you both met again in Cologne, and um, it was funny because uh, Heidi Bayer was just up here and we were talking about um, this uh, you know very imminent. Uh, Jazz ahead connected rhythm section of Jonas Bogwinkel and Robert Landfermann, and they were on your first album, yeah. which at the time I remember uh, Martin Laurentius, a colleague of mine from Jazz Thing, mm -hmm. wrote that you know this our favorite rhythm section is on their album, so they must be good. <laughs> 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 um, was that? Um, Something that's that's really um, you know because you were part of that Cologne scene. Did you just say, "Hey guys, we're doing an album. What are you doing next weekend?" Or um yeah, kind of. I mean, it was <laughs> always like the two of us um, writing the music and having the ideas for for the, the musical concept for this band. But actually, the first uh, jam session we did mm -hmm. just after I came back from my studies in in New York, and Philip just moved to Cologne from Amsterdam. I think, yeah. and um, then we we did this session with uh, Robert and Jonas, and that that felt really good. And immediately we brought some tunes, and they they just worked from the first time. You could even hit the record button, and <laughs> was was great already. So we did some gigs with the two of them. Um, of course, they were uh, already very busy, so it was hard to. Um, <laughs> To find some some dates to practice and but then we, we got this a uh, great opportunity at the Deutschland Funk, the German uh, radio, one of the German radio st public radio stations in Cologne. They have a beautiful uh, room where you can record and they supported us for this recording. So we had the opportunity to do this um, and we just asked Robert and Jonas if they would like to join. Um, yeah, and th they did, and I think that I still like the album, although it's yeah. already from 2014 or something. Well, yeah, that's seriously. such a long time ago. Yeah, that's it feels, it feels <laughs> like every, everybody did a lot of records in between, but it's still I still like to to hear it. And and after that, I mean, the two of them they got very still are very busy, and and so yeah, so we we got another rhythm section, and now it's again changing a little bit, but we are like the constant. Um, structure of that band so <laughs> yeah we will see what happens next yeah 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 that album was called anima right, right? exactly yeah. mm -hmm. it, it's a it's a really beautiful album and i think it, it's Thank it you. was great and very uh, poignant of what you said you know then then we went and did a lot of other things because you all really do a lot of other things philip yeah. uh, you also have uh, your own group you you're playing in so yeah. many other groups you're i mean sometimes it feels like <laughs> You're going like, mm, no, I could do more, or, or what was that look? <laughs> I should do more. No, yeah, but I mean, it's like there are a lot of different aspects of music that interest me, and I guess it's the same thing for for Stefan and our all of our colleagues actually. So you tend to find a, a vehicle in one band, you know, and. To, to express a certain facet of yourself and your uh, artistic and compositional output. But then it's not just only that. Maybe, you know, I've, I felt like playing more rock, jazz rock oriented music as well. So I had this trio of mine and uh, made a record or the Mengamo trio, which is like a with organ, but not like Dr. Lonnie Smith, more like Emerson Lake and Palmer <laughs> kind of stuff. And it's just because, you know, it's once you, you write the music, it has to be out there. And right. unfortunately, Stefan doesn't play organ. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, then you just think, hey, maybe. Yeah. And then, but it's sometimes it can be harsh to really get all bands to play and to have like the, uh, the attention they deserve at uh, at the same time, so once in a while you have to focus on that. So, like in 2019, 19, we yeah. focused again on on our quartet uh, making a new record. Right. And so gradually things shift. Just Stefan just released two beautiful albums. You know. Yeah. 
muse. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah. And uh, I think there's, um, you know, maybe a musical language that is uh, unique to Nyak and that parts of which, of course, it's you, are uh, on your own album, but um, that's, that's what everybody strives for, right? You want to have uh, something that's recognizable and where people maybe say, oh, wow, that, that kind of beautiful melody that could have been Stefan. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, right. I, I mean, it's, it's always like searching on your own for your own sound and your... Um musical vision and idea and then I think with the bands it's like it all these individuals come together and form like another person within the band that that has a an personality of its own so every band sounds a bit different and and Philip is, su is such a strong voice on the guitar that um, no no other band it would sound totally different if if he wouldn't wouldn't play or some other guitar player would play um and the same with fabian on drums he saw such a strong drum uh, yeah it's for for all the band members so and i also like to to compose that way and think of the band that way imagine the players while i'm writing the music or i think it's always like the i'm not writing music and then thinking about who which players i would like to get for the band it's mostly the other way around i think of the players first and then write the music so that's that's very important to me yeah wow i mean obviously this is the jazz ahead so a uh, really international gathering and uh, i read on i think philip's website there was an impressive list of countries where you've already uh, played was that really were these all paid gigs i mean no seriously <laughs> <laughs> i had to pay them <laughs> <laughs> but but i read uh china and uh, no. other exciting places uh, were you there with a trio or um no actually th there was another band where i was just uh <laughs> sideman you know which was still great but i mean it's like i guess it's true for for everybody uh, with a great program of uh, the German Goethe Institute, and I mean, there are several similar organizations in other countries as, as well. For example, China was like a, a organization from Luxembourg, which brought us over there. And um, yeah, it's just great to have the occasion to combine <laughs> playing uh, with visiting other countries and getting to know other cultures, you know? And um, sometimes we even bring back uh, really nice compositional ideas or different perspective of life or music or whatever you know yeah actually we we did with the philip and i we did a tour in in south korea that was really nice two weeks uh, 10 gigs i think it was yeah. really intense uh, uh, 14 days traveling all over the country um that was really intense and really great i think it yeah also changed something in the way we we played together and just spending so much time together abroad and also the audience everywhere in every country is a bit different uh reacting differently to the music and that's very enjoyable very nice also to see other places and i kind of miss that now in this the last year not being able to to travel i mean it was at least once a year some other country traveling with some of our bands um yeah, that was kind of a habit doing that. Yeah. We started with the Buyatso, for example, doing yeah. that, and the big <laughs> and the the, the the jazz orchestras in the different states in um, Germany. But then it moved to our own bands traveling abroad, and really, it's really a great joy to do that and meet other people and connect with all also, over the world. Yeah. yeah. Then tours are naturally longer because I mean, if you're touring in Germany, it's like maybe a week or you know but then if you were abroad most, yeah. it's like two weeks <laughs> it's even better <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally and philip you were saying you know that you bring this back and uh, mm -hmm. when you were just playing i really like this this song of yours uh, dreaming of nippers that's stefan's uh, song i mean of <laughs> yours as a band uh, uh, i'm yeah. sorry <laughs> um but you know that's it's not the nippers as we say in hamburg which is like little trinket but it's the, the part of Cologne, right? Yeah, that's right. But you can also understand it the way you, <laughs> you interpreted it. It's totally fine. Um, <laughs> but it was at, at a point where I was moving in Cologne to a different... And it was very hard to get an apartment because the prices were high up, still are very high. And uh, being a student, jazz student, I, I yeah, 
try to find a suitable apartment then we found a very nice one in Nippes, part of Cologne, very nice part, very friendly part and where the mixture of, of all kinds of people, it's really great having very traditional old people that, that have been in Cologne forever and speak the Cologne dialect, I don't understand at all and then very <laughs> a lot of people um, from abroad being there and all these restaurants and cafes really nice part of Cologne so um, I was dreaming of um, getting this apartment in Nippes so, and that was the time where I wrote this tune so it got that title <laughs> that's the story behind it <laughs> but, but it's not on the Scherzig is it? No, it's on the it's on the right uh, on, on the, the left, right side. <laughs> on okay. the left Very side, good. which is the right side to be. <laughs> yeah. But I th the the other Schelsig is very nice too, becoming very nice also. So yeah. 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 It's great. Cologne is a good city to be as a musician, I think. Well, and also uh, I mean uh, I must say it's sort of weird because you have a slight Dutch accent in your English, but you studied in Amsterdam, Ooh. so maybe <laughs> yeah. that's... Uh, yeah, and it's, it's really do. close to Holland, um, yeah. to the Netherlands. It is, yeah. The, and the Rheinische dialect actually reminds me of, of Dutch sometimes. I mean, I'm also from northern Germany where they speak Platt. So when I went to the Netherlands, I could already understand more or less all of it. Well, then you have to get into it, and yeah, it's actually I think uh, a thing I try to maintain to to speak Dutch still. So yeah, it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still in contact with uh, with the scene in Amsterdam? Are you playing with anybody there, or well, not so much? I mean, I moved to Cologne in 2010, and okay. I continued to play. I think like till the summer of. 2011, almost exclusively in the Netherlands, uh, played with this uh, Dutch singer, and um, which was really nice. But then things n naturally just drifted apart a little bit, and it's also with all the driving, you had to sleep over at people's places on the couch, well, which is who fine. Was, who was the Dutch singer? Was it Kiki Mandes? Or no, that's Renske Taminio. At, uh, at the time, who's a great singer and great composer. She, I think she's doing a lot of pop and singer-songer-oriented stuff now. But on Jazz Ahead, I met Kiki Mandus like six years ago or something, I guess. That, that, that was really nice. I was like, hey, somebody I can speak Dutch with. <laughs> and we studied together and then we ended up playing together and it was really, really nice. <laughs> Now, um, we've sort of hinted at these last 13 months, um, which were um, not so easy for, for most of us. And there's uh, a hashtag and a movement uh, called Alarmstufe Rot, which is about, you know, the, our entertainment industry, basically. And you have the song Alarmstufe Bund that's not connected in any way, is it? It's not connected. No, the tune is older than the pandemic. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, Can that be? <laughs> yes, <laughs> can that be true? <laughs> no, but it's it was kind of also a, a story from Nippes, from the part of, of Cologne. I, I was getting to, I love eating cake, and I was walking to a cafe in in uh, Nippes and getting some cake for me and my wife, and there was this little child sitting on the on the side of the street and having these um, colors, colorful, yeah. um, I don't know, uh, chalk. Chalk, chalk, chalk there yeah, you go. colorful chalk, and and she was painting and painting and painting, and it was really a mess, like abstract art. The whole <laughs> walkway, so it was really great. And she was maybe three years old or something, and she was singing while she was doing it. Alarmstufe bunt, Alarmstufe bunt. It was really sweet. So <laughs> I stood there and looked at it and said, "Okay, impressive, nice." So really colorful, and she was greeting everybody that was walking past her. A really open-minded child. So I thought, mm. "Okay, nice. I, I will call my next tune." I really I really miss my daughters now. This yeah. sounds just <laughs> like them. Thank you very much, Film Hensig and Stefan Kauschmidt of NIAC, which means us. guts, right? So Yeah, something, something like, like that. Yeah. Just doing it, <clears throat> surviving the pandemic and yes. go for it. Here yeah. we go. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Thank you.